Hello and welcome to Microsoft's Higher Education Remote Learning Series. COVID-19 has created a challenging year for Australian universities. The impact has been so fast moving, there's been little time to shift courses online, to upskill staff, and to figure out how to deliver engaging online learning experiences for students. Join me in the next four episodes, where I'll be interviewing some academics from Australian universities who've been teaching via online tools for quite some time. The idea is to inspire others to help talk about some of the tools and strategies that they've been using to create rich online experiences and to have a discussion about what works and what doesn't. I really hope you enjoy the series. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, episode, this fireside chat with uh, Dr. Magda Wadrak, who's a lecturer of chemistry um, in, and has undergraduate students and master's students and PhD students, and also has a PhD herself in quantum chemistry, which I certainly wouldn't try and explain to you. Um, Magda's research is focused in a lot of different areas and is really practical research in chemistry, uh, in part around sort of detecting heavy metals in soil and water, and has done some really interesting research around ship hulls that come into harbours and, and also some stuff in forensics in the medical field. So it's going to be great to have a chat to uh, Magda today. So thank you. Welcome. Welcome, Travis. Thank you for having me. Uh, no, no it's worries. really nice <laughs> yeah. to be invited. Yeah, yeah good. Um, so tell me, you, you've um, you've obviously been teaching for a while and you've been using a range of different technologies to teach um, across the years. So maybe let's just start with a, a, a general sort of chat about some of the technologies you've used or how do you integrate technology or how do you see technology fitting into learning for students? Yes, well, I have definitely been, uh, I'm a, um, I love technology um, and implementing it into my teaching has been something I've been doing over the years. Uh, of course, it's always done um, in a way to complement my teaching and enhance the learning experience of the student. So I'm very conscious of introducing technology, um, not just for the sake of the technology, but in a way that will enhance um, the learning process um, and the teaching process. So over the years, I guess, uh, we're talking over many years <laughs> now, <laughs> I was probably one of the first people that started embedding um, video simulations into PowerPoint slides. I know that yeah. we are going back. <laughs> That's back in the day, yeah. I remember we used to teach without PowerPoint slides. I don't That's know if right. I remember right. when, when I used transparencies. Do you remember those? <laughs> I do. I remember being at university. And it's interesting because one of the um, great lecturers I had in psychology actually used right. to use overhead transparencies and draw. And yeah. he was an amazing sort of almost like a cartoonist, I suppose, but just wow. describe ideas using, you know, bubbles and speech bubbles and stuff was really great for my for my brain. Anyway, we digress. Excellent. So, yeah. What you're describing is, you know, your lecturer's ability to understand that everyone's um, have a different learning style. So that's that was me as well. I understood that for some students, um, visual, you know, visual cues were more important than written words. Uh, I learned a lot better with, you know, visual representation. So I grabbed onto anything I could find, simulations, videos, um, and being, uh, because I, my, my research was in quantum chemistry and I used computer simulations, computer modelling, um, that was, you know, close to my um, understanding and I, I was able to get my hands on those simulations. Yeah. Um, and about, oh gosh, I'd say almost, 10 years now ago, I started uh, using uh, audio audio audience response uh, systems. Okay. Which we also call clickers. Yeah. Where yeah. I could um, survey students during lecture classes, particularly when I had, you know, 300 students in the lecture and you're trying to get some sort of feedback from the students um, on their understanding of a particular topic I've just introduced. You know, I could yeah. say, did everybody understand that? You know, raise your hand. That's not really going to yeah. capture, you know, the true understanding. So when I found out about the um, the clickers, I latched onto that and I applied for a grant and I got the clickers. So what I did was I asked questions, uh, multiple choice questions during the lecture on the topic I've just covered at the end of the lecture to test students' understanding. And immediately I would get the feedback right. um, in a graph situation. And then if there was a particular um, 
topic um, that the students, I could see this, you know, 90% of them misunderstood. I had opportunity to, to explain it straight away there and then in the lecture. Yeah. The other thing I found, Travis, just by pure accident, I didn't really expect these students were so engaged in the lecture. <laughs> they right. loved the clickers. So um, yeah, well, it's I almost could like see that um... technology was really working well. Yeah, it's almost like a um, an exit ticket for you was almost a formative assessment to sort of check whether the they've got the stuff, but also it, yeah. as you described there, it sort of um, gave them a a sense of I better really concentrate here, I better really digest this because I'm going. I know I'm going at some point going to have to give some feedback, and you know it's interesting to hear you talk about, and I can tell you know that you're a very sort of you know compassionate kind of lecturer who really you know, it cares a lot about what the students are experiencing, you know, by using that sort of um, multimedia, you know, when it was its first in, uh, inception back in the day and <laughs> the sort of clicker kind of technology to keep them involved. Given the current challenge that we're all going through around remote learning and about COVID-19, so, so on and so forth, what do you think is really important for you to do at Edith Cowan with your students to make sure that they're still connected to a community, um, you know, that they feel part of part of your classes. I mean, just talk to me about how important that is for them at the moment. Look, um, look, I'm not the only one going through all this uh, in terms yeah. of, you know, academics. Uh, we are all in this um, challenging environment. Um, for me personally, I wanted to make sure that students will be okay and they will still want to learn <laughs> because they've got so much else going on. I wanted to make sure that I take away the stress of right. the learning um, in my unit, you know, so they really want to come to the online environment and say, oh, this is great. I'm really enjoying this. That yeah. was my, because they come to a lab class uh, and I see them enjoying doing the experiments. So how do I, <laughs> how do I translate it to the online environment? Well, that was, yeah, that's one of the big challenges because I remember when I learned science at school and did some psychology mm -hmm. stuff at university too, you know, it was the labs where you really got to sign of, exactly. you know, get into the information a bit more deeply than, than a lecture and have an experience around it, which are, is really challenging now. But have you, how, how have you sort of let them have or see the experiments or, or have some experience with that in your classes now? Well, what you just said is so important because at the start of the semester this year, I said to the students, laboratory work is the most, um, is the best learning environment I can provide you with. Yeah. Being in the lab, doing the experiments. And then suddenly, on the 23rd of March, <laughs> I had to cancel all the lab classes. So, you know, here I am telling them, this is super important. This is the best learning environment and I'm going to take it away from you. Yeah. So that for me personally, and you know, learning chemistry without experiments is like learning how to swim without water. Yeah. That tells you all right. Okay. Yeah. So luckily, <laughs> I already uh, was introduced to Teams. Yeah. And so for me, it was a no brainer. I'm like, okay, let's do this. I can do this. I'm going to use Teams. Um, and I was very lucky as well because I had the support of um, some people from Microsoft in WA. Um, yep. I want to drop some names, Steve sure. Payne. <laughs> yep. um, he, you know, he's been absolutely amazing helping me to, um, to navigate through all this. And I said, I want to do this. Can I do it? He goes, yeah, this is how you do it. So let me show you what I did. Yeah, great. I'm going yeah, to share well, my screen to yeah. give you an idea so let me now share my screen how do you structure a learning experience i suppose through technology whether it's teams or something else um that kind of mirrors their experience of you know yeah what it's like to be in a lab you know how, yeah. do, how do you how do you design a class experience yes you know, well, here you thinking, go oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is my lab class ready i'll be quiet so, yeah. so just to give you a uh pictorial representation. Um, can I just very quickly, I know this, just very quickly, I want to show you something my yep. personal. <laughs> we um, just this year, uh, my university finished building a brand new science building. Wow, spectacular. Um, beautiful science being with the largest periodic table in the world. And the way my students were sitting in the lab, just to give you a visual, yep. is 
they set in, there you go. So you can see they're sitting in benches. Yep. And bench A, bench B, bench C, and so on. And I had a demonstrator or teaching assistant um, at the end of the bench, and they looked after the students on that bench. Okay. okay. So this is how we were in the lab. So how do I now translate that to the online environment? So Teams had, can do that for you. It's beautiful. I basically um, designed uh, or set up particular Teams sessions. Okay. Yep. So we've got bench A with my demonstrator Des looking after bench A, bench B is Roche, bench C, Joanne, and so on. Okay. Yep. Now, um, when you go into the bench, you then, because I have three lab classes running um, each in, during the day, so 9.30 a.m. till 12.30, 1 yep. 1.30, 2.30, 5.30 to 8.30. Within here, we've, of course, set up channels. Okay. So depending on the class, so the students are told to turn up to 9.30 a.m. class, as they normally would, yep. okay? Except instead of being in an actual lab, they're sitting in their online, yeah. <laughs> in the um, in the um, in their pajamas potentially. That's right. <laughs> I did say to them, if you want to make yourself feel a little bit more like authentic, <laughs> why don't you wear safety glasses and put on a lab coat? <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's not so funny because um, if I can now go on. So the idea is to, as I said, recreate that environment of being in the lab situation. Yeah. So they go into the particular and the demonstrator is there for them and they chat through teams about the experiment. Now you probably okay. want to ask me how do I run those experiments? Yes, how do you run those experiments? <laughs> <laughs> Funny you asked that. All right. <laughs> this is where OneNote comes into it. Now okay. a little bit of history. Why did I how did I get onto OneNote and electronic lab books? And how lucky was I that I started using electronic lab books and we are now in a position to be able to run um, labs um, online or you know remotely. Yeah. This would not I, if this would not have been possible, um, Travis, if I didn't have this set up. So how so a, a lab for those like me who it's been a long time out of university I've never really studied chemistry so a lab a lab book is a is a place where a student so within those labs when they're working at those benches they'll mm -hmm. have a lab a lab book a paper book or something where they rec are they recording data and things exactly. is that what they're doing in there so let me take yeah. you back let's go back yeah. to the 1900s remember those days <clears throat> yes no but yes <laughs> Well, I, I would like to um, just mention one of my um, heroes of the um, scientific world, and that is Marie Curie, um, who, you know, very famous scientist and yeah. um, close to my heart because I'm Polish and she's Polish. Right. And if you have a look, I, I, I had a look at um, one of her lab books. So this is exactly what we've been doing since 1900s. You know, you, you go to a lab, you perform an experiment, you have an exercise book, you record your data, you record the observations, you right. draw some diagrams. Look, this is exactly what Marie Curie was doing. And we've been doing that since 1900s. <laughs> so two years ago, I decided, well, hang on, I think I need to bring technology into my laboratory classes. And <clears throat> I found out that we can use something called electronic lab books. Um, electronic lab books is just a digital form of your lab book. However, how much more enriching is this um, type of a lab book? Because you can now embed pictures, videos, um, right. you can have your data automatically analyzed by Excel spreadsheet. Um, you know, all and the ability for demonstrators to mark live because you share the, the lab book with your demonstrator. And so they're watching, they're literally watching you as you're marking. Uh, sorry, as you they're marking you as you're doing the experiment, giving you so, feedback. So in in the OneNote setup that you've created there for the lab lab books, is that 
what's called a class notebook where all the students, everyone's in the one notebook and all the students have a private space. Is that the setup you've gone with? Exactly. So let okay. me just quickly show. So there's what it says, class notebook. So yep. if we go to one of those, um, oh, here we go. So what you can see, <laughs> these yep. are all my lab books that I've created, class okay. notebooks, sorry, for, for, for each bench. Yep, I right. Spoke about that. Yep. So let's pick on a bench and I'm going to pick on a particular one here. Yep. And what you can see at the top here, sorry for going so fast, is at the okay. top here, we welcome the students, we tell them who your demonstrators are, um, how to use OneNote. We have this amazing thing called collaboration space, which I absolutely love. And look, look at the example of how I use collaboration right. space. The students cre um, uh, did an experiment a week before we had to go online and they produced copper sulfate and we had to let the crystals grow over time and they were supposed to come back the next week to see the crystals. However, we went fully online so they couldn't right. come back to see the crystals. So we took photos. My, my lab technician took photos of all the crystals and I quickly uploaded them and this yep. Collaboration space means all the students in that particular bench can look at the crystals. Nice. So there you go. How, how great was that? That's good. So then um, content library is where they've got the lab manual yep. and lab reports. So this is a template for students to record the data. Yep. I also give them safety and time management. And here we go. You can see the students. So yep. see the list of students there. These yep. are my students in that particular uh, notebook. That bench, yeah. Yeah, that right. bench. And sorry, can I keep going? Yeah, keep going, yeah. Okay. So the way we operate at the moment is the students come at allocate at their normal allocated laboratory time. Yeah. They log in through Teams. Yep. I introduce the laboratory, so I talk to them. I give them a what's called a pre-lab session. So you do you do a share of a PowerPoint or something, and you camera yes. on and you talk to them. Do, do you record that as well? Of course, it's all recorded, yep. and they can watch it later. Yep. And then once I'm finished talking and and introducing the experiment, giving them um, the theory behind the experiment, what's expected, then they all go off to their particular um, bench on the yep. teams. That's where the demonstrators are waiting for them. And they look at the lab manual and they'll go, you know, experiment for, read the instructions. There's videos embedded in the actual lab manual here. Right. Now they are. <laughs> yep. They weren't before. And then um, they complete. And what's really neat about this whole thing Sorry, I'm quick clicking along. That's okay. No, it's as good the to see. students, so look at this. As the students are completing the look at that drawing. Is that fantastic? Yep. As the students are completing the experiment, this one in particular, Travis, was done online. So this is yeah, an example right. of what the students did a couple of weeks ago when they were doing yeah, this fantastic. experiment. And as the students are completing the experiment, the demonstrators are at home seeing it live come up and they're marking. Yeah, <laughs> they're able to give feedback in real time. Exactly. They can straight away give feedback and say, hang on, there we go. You know, you haven't balanced the equation. Okay. And then the student can balance it. So yep. that ability to have, and, and so we talked, you, you asked me, how do I keep the students engaged? Yep. This isn't about telling the students, here's a video, watch it in your own time, record the results, and email me, you know, the answer, the mm. your report. No, 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 no. We yeah. want this to be as interactive, as engaging as possible using the technology, and we can yeah. do it, and we yeah. have done it. <laughs> we have done it. Yeah, no, it's amazing, and it's great to see that the, you know, the the feedback can be given to the students, you know, in all, almost in real time, right? About it what is, their their yeah, lack it's, of understanding of a concept. Yeah, yeah. Or I mean, the, the students. Um, and they know that they, ha you know, they are, they they have to be on on ball. They have to be, you know, watching the videos, and they're expected to, um, to report the observations and write the equations there and then. Yeah. 
So the learning is, is happening how I want. I, the way I want the learning to happen is happening. Yeah, and I mean, one thing that I know you can't show because it won't sort of come across as a video, but you've actually got, you had the demonstrators at some point record quite a few experiments just via video camera. Yeah, let me, and, th and then you Im embed those in there, right? Which may yeah. not play for us here, but. Let's just see how, or just, let's me have a quick, okay. see, just to see how well, um, you may not be able to see it that well, but um, yeah. sorry. So content library, here's my lab map. So this is one where the the beauty also of um, OneNote is this ability to embed the videos. So, um, yep, that's videos, so they can, that. exactly, they don't have to go anywhere uh, else. Right, yep. There you go. Let me just, um, it's it's done through, I have to put it into a program called Panopto, yep. which is the university. Yep. I'm just going to turn the sound down. Yeah, that's okay. Um, that's looking okay, isn't it? Yeah, that's okay, that, yeah. Yeah, so this is um, generating hydrogen gas and I explain everything and the students have a visual. So look, the only thing that's missing, I mean, it's an important aspect, of course, is the, you know, the the skills that they're going to gain by performing yeah, the experiment. Actually but, yeah. but really, when you think about it, they're getting the theory, they're seeing what's happening and for some experiments, you know, holding a test tube is not something you, you'll miss this out because I've turned the sound down, but there's a there's a big I'm going to I'm going to play it again because you've got to listen to this. Well, I'll see whether the sound comes through. It may not, but. Uh, oh, OK. Yeah, you no, that's think. OK. I mean, uh, the, the, the really the sound as well. I want to make yeah. a point. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What well, they, they need to hear. They smell. They can't they, smell. No, they can't smell. <laughs> We're still working on that technology, but at yeah. least they can hear it and see what's going on. And I suppose, um, yeah. thanks for thanks for showing us all of that. Um, I suppose the the really interesting thing for me and the and the inspirational thing I suppose is how you've kind of worked together with some different technologies and some different techniques to try and work out how am I going to give my learners an experience that is as close as possible or, or the best the next best thing to being in a lab with yeah. us and, and doing the hands-on stuff, but doing it via technology? Uh, it's, it's like I said to you, it's so hard for me to, to transition. It was hard for me to transition to the um, remote learning. Yeah. Um, but we have the technology. Yeah. We're like, if, if it was going to happen at any time, this was the best time for it to happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, and... I believe that you, you know, I really have to think about it quite a bit. What would be best? Everything for me is always focused. What is going to work for students? Yeah. No point in me setting something up and I'm thinking, oh, this is great. I'm really happy with this. And then the students, you know, are not getting the experience. Yeah. So, so I even said to students, please, you know, let me know what's not working. You know how I'm gonna. How can I improve that? You know, one thing that, um, if I can give you an example, is originally when I started the very first week, my internet was not good enough for me to share my screen and talk at the same time. Yep. So what I had to do was ask one of the students to share their screen, right, with my PowerPoint slides, so I could still talk and they could hear me. <laughs> now that was not. I wasn't happy with it because I wanted the control. Of course. And I wanted to be able to draw, you know, structures and so on. So yeah. I rang up my internet provider and said, I need better internet <laughs> <laughs> upload. I've got to teach you. I've got to teach you. Exactly. So, yeah. again, for me, it was, I didn't want to use the technology um, if I couldn't use it to its full capabilities. Yeah. There yeah. you go. And I think, yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. And I think the, you know, the other thing that you've obviously spent a lot of time thinking about is, um, not just about engaging them, but about how can I make it as similar to the experience they would have had, and even to to have those teams set up called Bench A, Bench B, yeah. Bench C, so that they feel like, oh, I'm kind of just at my bench with my, you know, my fellow students here, and and I I can see them. So, um, yeah. you know, it's Magda, it's been fantastic to have a chat with oh, you. Thank, thank you, you so much for um, sharing your screen in and showing. No, uh, can I can I share something with you because oh, that right. really is close to my heart. Is I, I got a comment from a student, and yep. I know this is very self indulgent at the moment, but <laughs> I just wanted to share this because it really 
tells me that I've done the right thing. And, you know, she said that um, I can only imagine how frustrating it's been for you, but um, thank you so much for putting all the extra work and um, giving me a chance to continue my learning. And when I read that, that was it. Yeah, I it makes all, all the hard work work Well, well. It, yeah, it, it also um, made me realise that I am, sorry, doing the right thing because, um, like I said to you, one thing is to use technology and you think, oh, it's great, I'm happy with it. <laughs> but if the students are not getting, yeah. you know, the experience, what I and, and what, what she said to me is exactly what I was trying to achieve. Yeah, brilliant. I rest my case. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fantastic. It's fantastic work. So thank you so much, Magda. On behalf of the students too at Edith Cowan, it's be oh, awesome to have a lecturer like you who can um, try and work out how to mirror that experience of what labs are like and what chemistry, which is a very sort of physical experience, is like mm -hmm. and how to translate that into online world is brilliant. So Magda, thank you so much for spending some time with us and I uh, look forward to touching base again. Thank you, Travis. Thanks for, um, for interviewing me. <laughs> ah, no problem. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.